Hey, I'm Edward Thompson. Welcome to this episode of Pictures on My Mind. In today's episode, I'm basically going to talk about how you can be a loser and still win at photography. Because it can feel that way, all right? Like social media, you're just constantly bombarded. Like obviously people sharing all their successes in like life, but also photo successes, people winning grants, awards and whatever. It can all be a bit like, uh. Here's a trick, right? As a card carrying loser myself, um, I'm not, because I never stopped. I didn't give up. So I'm gonna give you eight things now to think about of why you might feel like a bit of a loser, but it's okay because you can still win at photography. I can prove that to you, okay? So here we go. Number one, grades don't matter, okay? Let's say you've studied a photography degree and you've come away with a grade and you don't think it's great, you know, like a two, two, a third or whatever. I'm pretty sure no one in the history of freelancing ever got a freelance assignment because they held up a piece of paper that had first written on it, okay? As photographers, it's pretty cool. We have something called a portfolio, whether it's printed or online. That's probably why you're getting hired for commissions because they've seen your work. It doesn't matter about the grade. I got a 2-2. It turns out four years later, some of the work that I got the 2-2 for was in National Graphic Magazine. <laughs> Not better at all. Um, but yeah, again, that just also proves just how ridiculous it is, okay? So don't worry about it. Um, when I got my master's degree, um, it turned out because of a clerical error in the library, I didn't actually have my degree for five years. And yet I was telling everyone I had an MA. I got an agency in Italy, they represented me and I said I had an MA. No one checked it out, didn't matter. So anyway, so yeah. But, um, so the point is, is that it doesn't matter so much, okay? Um, if you really look into it, a lot of the top photographers in the UK, particularly, they didn't study photography. They sort of studied some humanities degree at Oxford or Cambridge, okay? But that's another story. And if you don't have a degree in photography again, that's fine, man, that's okay. You know, you can teach yourself, there's so much available to you. Don't let that be something that makes you feel like you're a loser, that makes you feel like you're not a photographer, you are a photographer, and no piece of paper is gonna say otherwise, okay? Number two, photo awards, okay? Um, a lot of people might be smashing the photo awards and they're always going like, I won this award, I won that award. A lot of the photo awards are really expensive to enter. There's even one particular photo award I remember where I think you pay to enter it and then like 100 people shortlist and then you have to pay more money to get to the next level. How much of like a pyramid scheme does that sound like? That's an actual photo award. Isn't that crazy? So yeah, so photo awards, maybe don't worry about it too much. Um, again, I said in a previous video, some of the photo awards, you can't even sort of apply to enter anyway. You have to be nominated by a select group of individuals. So, you know, forget it. Advice, if you are going to enter some photo awards, look at the photographers that win, okay? If, the, if you're doing like gritty social commentary, like social documentary photography, and each year they give the award to the photographer who does the close-up photos of the skirting board, don't waste your money, okay? Number three, artist residencies, all right? You might be applying to them a lot. You might not be getting any of them. Oh, I applied to them a lot. I didn't get any of them. But here's the thing, right? Do you need that? Do you need that validation to legitimize making your photography? That's in your head. You could step out your front door right now and I'm telling you, there's an amazing project unique to your area, unique to you and your knowledge. And you could just make an amazing project right now. You don't need to be on the artist residency. You could walk out your front door and say, yes, I am now an art photographer and I'm making the project. You can just go do that, okay? And a cool thing on a pitch level is, yeah, man, your neighborhood to you, like you see it every day, it might seem really normal and mundane, but to an audience on the other side of the planet, it's unique. It's unique, it's amazing, it's, it's exotic to them. It might not be to you, but to them it is. So again, don't worry about if you don't get the artist residencies, okay? You lose out, don't worry. There's an amazing project just waiting for you and it's right outside your door. Now testify. Number four, let's say you haven't got much money and you've got kind of rubbish kit. Wow, you're in the digital age, right? And I've said in a previous video about um, photography kit, like cheap photography kit, there's so many eras of digital cameras now. In the beginning, um, 20 years ago, even the 20, 20D I bought, the Canon 20D, it was like two and a half grand just for the body. You could pick up a top of the line DSLR camera from like three years ago or four years ago for not much money, for like a couple of hundred quid. So yeah, if you feel like, oh, I need to have this kit, but I'm too poor to afford this amazing kit, don't worry. That's not an excuse anymore, okay? For a couple of hundred pounds, you can get yourself a pretty decent DSLR and a pretty decent lens, okay? So again, don't let that make you feel like you're not good enough, okay? And as we all know, all true photographers know, 
being a great photographer has very little to do with your camera, okay? It's all about you, it's about your perception, how you see, your will, your heart, your hand, everything then. So yeah, don't, don't let that be a reason that you don't feel like you're worthy or you can do this. Um, number five, um, for me, like my career has been really slow because I was like a hot, I was at a job center, then I was a holiday camp photographer for a couple of years, and then I was doing like weddings and PR. It's my it's been it's been a long 23 years, okay? And in a weird way, because of that, like man, I've never been in the desert with the rock band. Do you know what I mean? I've never been covering the pyramid stage at Glastonbury, I've never been on like the Christopher Nolan film set or all the things I'd like love to have done. Um, but that's kind of good. Do you know what I mean? Like What's the phrase? When all of your wishes have been granted, many of your dreams will be destroyed. Um, <laughs> so weird. Yeah. So what am I trying to get? What am I trying to say here? Um, you know, let's say if you're a loser and you're still on your ascent, you kind of kind of have faith because you're not fallen. Do you know what I mean? You haven't gained some amazing height. You haven't been like Icarus flying too close to the sun and had your wings burnt and being all like, oh, I flew too close to the sun. I haven't. You're just still enjoying it, dude. You know, I could totally photograph like a friend's kid's birthday party or do some little little tiny assignments for whatever. And I love it. I love photography. I'm not doing those assignments being like, oh, I wish I was back with the rock band in the desert. Like, no, I'm good. I'm good. So again, if you haven't had like massive successes as a photographer, maybe that's kind of good, you know, because you still love it. You haven't got kind of tempted over to the dark side where it's become more about ego about, you know, famous people or, or exotic locations. You're still just, you're comfortable um, just being a photographer. Number six, okay, you might be a bit of a loner. Well, the good news about photography is you can do it alone. You're a one person wrecking crew. You're a one man band, whatever, all that stuff. Uh, speaking of a band, it's not like you need the drummer to get your band going. It's not like you're a dancer and you need a troupe to dance with. Photography, you can do this on your own, okay? So that's okay, you know, if you don't know anyone or whatever, like, you can do this still, man, it's okay. Um, even if it's just you and a camera, that's enough. You can do that. Number seven, um, photography is, I think, a great way to break addictions. Um, you could just take a camera out for a day, like a whole day and really go for it. I bet you get like one amazing photograph and the dopamine hit you're going to get from that great photograph, the excitement you get is going to be amazing. Um, it will draw you out of like, say, if you're hanging out with quite toxic groups, maybe there's something they do that you don't want to do anymore. Photography can show you a way. You can go with photography away from that group, away from the things that they're into, and you can now do photography and you can be rewarded. And yeah, okay, so there's some plateaus when you do photography that little, you can get stuck for a while, but that initial hit, that initial jump into photography is exhilarating and amazing. And thanks to digital photography, completely immediate. I mean, you know, so yeah. Photography is a tool to get over like either a toxic group or traits that you have in yourself or addictions. I think it's really cool. And number eight, um, if you're really feeling like a loser, if you feel you've got no friends in the world, um, just do photography. I guarantee you, you will make friends, okay? Photography will take you out of your house. It will take you eventually if you like. You might want to talk to a stranger in the street and take a portrait, or you might go to an event where there are people and maybe you're photographing them. Maybe you start hanging out with other photographers, but either way, you know, I guarantee you do it for a long enough time, you won't be alone anymore. And yeah, it's as simple as that. Um, photography is a wonderful excuse to talk to people. I think it was at Diane Arbus that sort of said that, you know, with a camera, she was like a super tourist. Um, photography is a way into other people's lives. So again, if you feel like the biggest loser on the planet, you've got no friends, you just want to, you know, you just want to stay in your sort of bedroom all summer and not go out, get a camera. You will meet people and it works for any age. It doesn't matter whether you're a teenager, whether you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, it doesn't matter. The camera will draw you out and it will draw you out into the real world and you'll meet other people and yeah, it's exciting. You'll, as I said previously, you'll get that rush because you'll take some amazing photos. You give photos to them, they'll feel good about it because you see these amazing photos. So again, it's a win-win. So yeah, so there you go. So hopefully that was like eight reasons why if you're feeling like a loser, one, maybe that's not too bad. Maybe that's pretty cool. I think lots of cool musicians have written songs about feeling like a loser. Um, Beck um, gets Radiohead, so lots of stuff like that. It's okay. And the other thing is it's not a bad position to be in um, as a photographer. 
because there's loads of ways out of this, man. There's loads of ways you can use this. So a lot of these things that you feel like aren't helpful or positive, they can be helpful and positive things. It's just the way you gotta the way you gotta look at it. So yeah, let's let's all be losers. Let's not give up and let's get there and let's win. I'm a driver, I'm a winner. Things are gonna change, I can feel it. <laughs>